Okay, we're back, but only for a moment to see our beautiful faces and my wonderful hand as we get into Newkirk Precinct for Neeb versus Bly. Yep. I mean, our faces, so your hand and my face. What's the face of, uh... Yeah, I got nothing. All right, yeah. it's game oh. one in a best of five. I want to really emphasize that because we are now in the semifinals for the season four monthly finals. This also means every player playing from this point forward has earned prize money, which is awesome. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. However, in the bottom left is going to be our recent dream hack champion. Spoiler alert, it's Neeb playing for Tang. In the bottom right, as the blue Zerg, it is Bly. Now, real quick, guys, I've posted this on Twitter, and I'll be contacting all the players after all said and done. Uh, due to some technical problems with our PayPal, uh, prize payouts for this month will probably be delayed until about the 15th or so, uh, at the latest. I've been told it's about two weeks to get things like this fixed, so uh, hopefully it won't take that long. But I think, I'm hoping, my fingers crossed, four years of a flawless track record. I hope there won't be any any problems from the players side for this. <laughs> yeah. I uh I think it'll be it'll be understanding. I hope so. Now if it was a random no, actually I'm not gonna go there, never mind. Well no, honestly, if it was some random guy who had never played in our events before that got this far, he might be a little bit less trustworthy, but I would uh, yeah, I was gonna blind. specify a re region. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but even <laughs> blind, many others have played in a lot of our events, and I don't think they're going to be too heavily concerned. Uh, other side of the semifinals, by the way, we did get uh, a walkover. Keen had Euthermal not show, again, as predicted. No punishment for Euthermal or anything like that. We just we went through about eight players before we said, fuck it, you know what? No more replacing. If they show, they show. If they don't, oh well. We'll move on. Yeah. Uh, but Optimus and Showtime are currently playing. It looks like Showtime's up 1 0, so. He'll be playing in the other semifinals if he beats Optimus. Yeah. I did, uh, I did the bracket predictions that Challenge has now, and I just basically put Neeb and Showtime in the finals and said, titled the bracket prediction Rifkin Heats Protoss, I think. <laughs> so I, named it that. I mean, it sounds pretty accurate to me, so. Oh man, what a massive combo. Heatsink for the 22 month resub. Not only dethroned the bit boss, but got like 2,000 health out of it. This is cool the way it combos with like resubs. They're gonna so, need a neat name at something besides bit boss. I like the okay. So the idea of bit boss is like yeah, it's it was originally for bits, and we can disable subscribers. By the way, that's not yeah. fully integrated into it. That's an opt-in thing which I chose to turn on. But I think it's kind of cool because a lot of the times we'd sit there with like a stale bit boss. No, but it's you know, not a day where people want to throw bits at it. But the uh, the subs would keep knocking it around and doing damage consistently in the background, which I think is cool. Ah. Could be cool. Anyways, uh, Neeb and Bly, I think it's a really fun matchup. Once upon a time, Bly was actually the favorite of the two to go into this. And I don't mean like six years ago or anything silly like that. But honestly, <laughs> there's a time where Neeb just didn't know how to deal with Bly. Neeb was killing Korean Zergs left and right, but would lose to Bly's yeah. proxies and weird Nidus worms and just couldn't well. deal. Anyone who could throw him off by not playing standard was basically Neeb's kryptonite, and uh, yeah, so he still gets thrown off occasionally, like you know, like an online tournament when maybe <clears throat> something goes wrong in the first two games, and he's just like, ah, okay, whatever, I'm gonna lose. But he's really learned to bounce back in the more important tournaments and just in general with mental fortitude. And um, I would say this is a three-zero, but Bly didn't look too bad at all versus DC Cutie. Obviously, DC Cutie isn't Neeb different races and Neeb just you know no, champion but, right well I was playing but pretty it, smoothly like there weren't a lot of mistakes out of him yeah well I mean that that second game was really the smoothest by far like he really did just take control of the game and then like absolutely took advantage of it the first game I guess had like the whole hellbath thing right in the swarm host so it was a little bit a little bit wonkier but um speaking of swarm host I did mention that I saw it yesterday and that wasn't versus mech okay queen's gonna go down Orgle's cool uh and uh yeah it wasn't versus mech it was versus Protoss yeah, I'm trying to think. Solar. Yeah, it was GSL. Solar did it as well. I think versus, I want to say Trap, was it? It was the group you played before. Sounds familiar. GSL. Yeah. Yeah, but when I, well, because I got spoiled in chat. So I won't spoil anyone in chat now. But yeah, uh, it was interesting to see him go for Swarmhost. It looked quite effective. And then Hero was able to 
uh, just power through basically in a very very long series. So it was kind of dissuaded from doing it again. But I don't know. Like I don't know if any of the Zergs are really experimenting with that. Bly would be a guy that experiments, um, kind of. It's like what Bly does weird. He's done weird for a very long time. I'm not even sure I would say that Bly is experimental. He's just cheesy and and all lindy, and he likes the build that he's always liked. Yeah, I, I can get behind that. Uh, but man, it's a lot of adepts. And speaking of things people like, Neve is a fan of getting really aggressive early on, and oftentimes at the cost of a mothership core, to note. So if Bly did have some sort of counterattack going on, um, this could possibly punish Neve, but it looks uh, like at he most they'll stall out the third. Oh, no. Yeah, I just, uh... No, I thought that was an overload drop as well. I think they just, yeah, the lings got in, so... They're, they're taking out transferring probes, I believe is what's happening. But the Adepts have really threatened Bly here. They are going to shade into that main base. They were up against a wall, and there's no upgrades for these lings, so it was a very good shade. That is a third Oracle there. I don't think Neeb's usually the type to go mass Oracle, but he even saves the very low one. The other low, low one is still paired up. Uh, that one just went out. Problem is, there's still the Adept part of the equation that's proving to be difficult to deal with. I'll give it to Bly though, he hasn't lost yeah, yeah. a substantial amount of workers yet, but I mean, 13 yeah, yeah. down is still 13 down. Yeah, that's not a substantial amount, but it is when you consider that he hasn't been able to drone at all past that, you know? He, like, he didn't instantly go back into droning, he's making nothing but links and roaches. But you know, one of, the, one of the good things for Bly, at least when he's behind this, is his army's not looking too bad, so he can continue with the pressure he'd like, but he did also delay that third for a fairly decent amount of time. Like, Neem still doesn't actually have this up and running yet. Mm -mm. But this is... Well, this is obviously turning into an all-in. Bly has just moved his queens forward as well and stopped joining a long time ago. Uh, and has gone for roaches and now even ravagers. So we have Overlord Speed on the way, which he, if he had an evolution chamber, maybe a drop or two could distract, but that's not going to be the case. Wow, I really like what Neeb just did. I don't even... I, I don't everything. know if it's the good... Well, he didn't just cancel it, he moved it. Like, he canceled this base and then put it up to the north, and I was like... I have I have talked about like just being like wonder why more processes don't automatically expand to the north because this all in can be very powerful on this third base, but I'm I'm still not even sure if I really like it. Like I like the idea. I wanna see if it works, but is it worth canceling an almost complete Nexus? Maybe. Probably. Hmm. The mortals aren't actually do too much. Although they'll soak hits and deal a fair amount of damage, there's nothing really armored left. Yeah, they're... Yeah, they just they're, they're oh, army units. those corrosive so. vials have got to go on top of the Immortals in the Centuries <laughs> for sure. Everything's it really is a thing about chilling. Ravagers. They could die easily, but the Transfuses are fixing that. I mean, that's a nice thing. They don't take the bonus damage. So, I mean, Immortals still deal a decent amount of damage even when they're not bonus attack, but the Transfuses from Ply are pretty good. He's up double the army supply almost. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I feel like there's a chance for something to happen here, but a lot of it's going to consist on the curse of Biles more than anything else. Oh, that deep power is pretty brutal. Pretty brutal indeed. Two yes. gateways plus more two, but more bones. importantly, the immortals. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that when transfuses run out, assuming that they ever do, because this attack is apparently going to last a very long time. That's when the army, I think, of Bly doesn't look very strong at all. Like, in fact, being only up 15 army supply when it's Ravagers, specifically, and Queens, isn't even that impressive for DVP. So, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> Bly's thinking the same thing, maybe, like pulling his Queens back, just letting the Ravagers deal that free Crows of Bile damage and hopefully not die for it. So, this is an X for now. No more Death Warpings or Sentries. That, uh, um, that's not being rebuilt either. I mean,. He has force fields, so if he warps in zealots, he'll probably be able to connect with once or twice. But he's getting resident glaze. I think he wants to warp in adepts. Yeah, with all the going down, down, though, you're not really gonna have that option. I mean, the one thing about on. the that's been so fantastic through this, though, is like regardless of their damage, that barrier keeps coming off cooldown, and they're able to continuously soak damage. Like I wish there was yeah. a stat, a graph we could pull up and show you guys just how much damage well, has been absorbed this game. There's certainly a reason why a mortal sentry um, or a mortal, a mortal's in an army, I guess. Like whether it's with zealots or with adepts or with stalkers, there's a reason why it works out well against almost any composition, right? You see Ling Baneling, immortals are also like you have eight of them, you have eight of them. So <laughs> I know that's been a complaint from mm, some of his oh. players before. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, shout out to Regeltis, that monster resub of 34 months. Might be some of the highest health I've seen on a bit boss in a while. Mm. 
Well, as Neeb held that, I think that just put him in a very, very, very commanding position. You know, as, even as Bly disengaged with the Queens, because they were running out of chance uses, I guess, he wasn't really droning. So, I think he's only gotten, like, 12 more drones? No, maybe not even that. Like, the point is, he's still below 50, and that's just not very good. He's trying to cut Neeb down below 50 as well, but it doesn't quite work out. So 55, not so bad, and a fourth base already on the way. There's no real easy solution for these immortals. If Bly yeah, had really enough easy. lings, actually, I think holding him in place with the lings and then getting across the bows would be really cool to see. But man, that's a lot of Ravagers. He's sitting on like 20 Ravagers right now. And again, these don't take the bonus damage from the immortals, but they've only got 120 health. Transfuse on that one for the front line, though, just won't let it die. Finally goes down. But as he starts concaving, the barriers are off. They're on cooldown. He's getting the shots in. He takes out the immortals and the Ravagers. Is this the answer Zerg has been looking for? Well, even if he kills this army, he'll successfully cancel the fourth base, which is good. He but might not be able to do more amazing. than that, though. Neeb's, like, got, let's not forget, not the greatest not production behind this. He's bringing forward his adepts, and he did oh, save the three of his immortals with micro. The you know, funny thing is, the adepts are going to be better against the Ravagers than the immortals will. Just do their way to fire, but. Blimey, 34-something lings behind this. He's walking those queens slowly across the map. He has lost a decent amount of his Ravagers. Keep in mind, he started off the attack with 20, now down to 10. Mm. But those queens have gained a lot of energy back, so the story of the immortal Ravager might come back, come back into play here. And now he has Banelings with Banelings speed. And he's going to complicate it for Neeb, who also never really successfully entirely made up, I think, his production oh. losses. He added more production, but I don't know if he compensated for his free base. Ah, uh, so I think he was okay. But no no second robo. Yeah, actually, I think he is just a, a little light on the production, so he's banking a little bit. Oh, those banelings are going to almost get the connects they want. This last second force was fantastic, but the Immortals are still going to go down. They connect a decent amount of the Adepts at the top of this ramp. New Warpens of just Stalkers coming in. They yeah. just have Stalkers fair against this. They do not have Blink, however. They, yeah, they're only a half way to blink. That's a very long time to wait. I mean, if he had both of the upgrades, he'd have the Resident Glaive Adepts for the Lings and Stalkers to help chase down and micro against the Ravagers. But as it is, it's very complicated. And Neeb thinking that he could hold that fourth base, especially to get Potent Overcharge. Unfortunately, just lost it. Orange Minerals down the drain. He finally has a second Robo. And of course, that, you know, the Forge is, is finally up and running again. This is so all in at a bligh. Like, he's relying on army supply more than anything else. Sitting on 100 army supply. If he can break his opponent, he'll win the game. Awesome, cool. But if he doesn't break need here, there's no tech, there's no follow up. Yeah. It, it still is, is possible. Neeb. I mean, if he loses this, he's probably going to look at that one aggressive uses. movement. <laughs> that one aggressive movement in the main uh, middle of the map and, and blame that. But I'm not sure he is going to lose. I mean, Blink is almost done. Plus two is probably going to finish up before everything is said and done, considering how long this attack is lasting. Yeah. Man, I... Oh, it's so close. He's going to kill a lot of his own legs with the Ghost of Biles. Yeah. a little bit awkward. Yeah, running out of those force fields. Yo, Barrier's on cooldown still. Not quite off yet. Fly's been doing a lot of these consistently, like trigger the barriers and the walk away movements, but this might just be Neeb's defense here. He comes in really aggressive on that front line. Crystal Biles do not hit. He's out of transfuses. The Ravagers are starting to disappear. And this is not looking wow. good for Bly. Well, the Crystal well, actually, Biles just hit a lot of those stalkers. Yeah, the right there at the end. Alive. Neeb doesn't have quite the bank he ha used to. Plus two, barely not done. The Immortals are going to go down to these lings, and Neeb taps oh, out. Oh, my God. That was such a scary all in though. There's so it was. so I many mean, reasons why that great. should not have worked. But yo, gotta get caught up real quick. 47ness hit us up with a 14 month resub. We missed that because it didn't actually kill the bit boss. It brought it down 100 health. But thank you very much, 47ness. Not just for that resub, man. Fuck that. But for that awesome fan art that will forever be the like. I really don't think anyone's gonna top that. No one's ever gonna top that. Very difficult. But yeah, people are asking if uh, subs and resubs are dealing damage to the boss, and the answer is yes. It's a new feature. We're testing it today. I'm not sure if I like it or not. I might have to tone down the multiplier because people resub for like 34 months, and it becomes like mm -hmm. an unkillable boss. <laughs> yeah, I wondered about that. Hmm. This, maybe it's made for channels that haven't been around so long. <laughs> but uh, 
at any rate, like really cool, really cool to see. Of course, fantastic game out of Bly. We we have seen so many Zerg players just their head against the wall trying to figure out this matchup and deal with adepts and deal with immortals over the last few months. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to see someone come in with what I'm going to say is a definitive strategy. I don't think you just make 20 Sonic the Hedgehogs for no reason. Like, you have to well, plan that out ahead of time. He definitely had uh, an idea of what his composition would look like. The all-in probably was also planned, considering how many queens he had made preemptively. But it always helps if you can absolutely smack down the adept attack. I actually said that it doesn't, that really wasn't going so swimmingly for him in the beginning. Neeb had a response, Neeb held. It was, and I mentioned this, if Neeb had lost, I think Neeb would look back at that moment he pushed forward without a warp prism, without a recall, as the point that he really let that win go. Because if he had just stayed in his natural, or between his natural and the third base, he would have had so much more army supply. Well, the next map is Belshir, and we're just waiting for folks to ready up. Thank you, Korn's champion, for that five-month resub. Increase volume of fire? What? What's Big and Hero talking about? Fire. I don't know. Sometimes you can say weird things. Maybe the explosion sound? I don't know. Hmm. Well, Big and Hero, oh, you have to let us know. I had to ban him earlier. He's getting rambunctious. <laughs> okay. It's game number two at a best of five and... If you can believe it, he's actually down one in the series, spun in the top left. It's going to be the red Protoss Neeb. Cool, the camera just locked again. <laughs> Look, my hands are off the keyboard, <laughs> but it's stuck spinning. I, uh, I'm not getting that effect, I'm glad to say. I mean, you're stuck for me, but you're not like anything else. And the bottom right is the blue Zerg, it is Bly. <laughs> Um, the flipping stutters just looks so ugly. Oh, cool! It just like fixed itself for no reason. Nope, it didn't. I don't understand. Okay. okay, Starcraft, I get it. Things happen in patches that can screw things up, unintended consequences. But I do wonder what implications of introducing Phoenix to co-op made it so that the one v one camera mode would break. We definitely talked about this before, right? Because, like, basically the entire Legacy of the Void beta had a bunch of, like, weird knick-knack. Just, like, why would this ever break? It was fine back then in the last patch, blah, blah, blah. And it's, like, I think my, my, my analogy still holds true. It's, like, StarCraft II as an engine, and I don't know a lot about programming or, or development or anything like that, but this is what I imagine it's like. After seven years, I'm going to be going on eight soon. It's crazy. Like... It's just no. like a Jenga oh. block that has had so many pieces rearranged that it really is just like one little thing is no, going to no, screw no, it no. up. I figured it out. Oh my god, you, you led me to this path of re remembering. Uh, there's that guy recently who found the StarCraft source code and mailed it back to Blizzard. Yeah. If you guys haven't heard this story, TLDR, in some old box he got from like eBay or something, he found the StarCraft, the original StarCraft source code. He sent it to Blizzard. They thanked him so much by rewarding him with a trip to BlizzCon and some stuff. What if, Zombie Grub? That source code was the missing piece of the puzzle they haven't had for years. And every time the game breaks, it's been because they didn't have the relevant data. That Wasn't been that for original for. Brood War? But the game may have been built off of it. It's the source code, after all. Have you seen oh, that movie with Jake Gyllenhaal? Come on, man! I really hope to God it wasn't. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, man. This, this is nah. where, if you're up to me, you start spamming some Riff Conspiracies in chat and Riff Launch. I mean, that was a good movie. I like that movie, by the way. Just a side note. But anyways, I really think it's just like, like, I, I don't know how it works, okay? But I really feel like someone just accidentally put something somewhere, like a, a wrong letter or some shit, and this is what happens. Oh, yeah. They use spacing, space instead of tabs for the code. Yeah, something like that. Totally. No. <clears throat> but just the idea. I'm sure. I'm sure it was. Um, but anyways, it just always seems to happen. I mean, whether or not it affects everyone is a different question, I suppose. Because for me, I felt like I got affected more by the lobby bug that only appeared after two patches ago, I think, or three patches ago was when it like hit me, and I was like, what yeah. the hell's happening? By the way, uh, do you know much about my daddy? 
Want to know a lot about Cur Daddy? Thank you very much for the seven month resub. Welcome back to the channel. Okay. okay. Go with it, sure. Just, just, it's like, uh, it's like a moving car. Duck and roll. Just roll with it. What? Just, like moving out of a. Like, if like, you're in a moving car and you're gonna get out, you don't just, like, jump and you're out. Gonna you're like, duck okay. and roll. Okay. You just you, you said, like, with a moving car, and I was like, I don't think you should duck and roll with a moving car. You'll <laughs> like, probably lose that race. Summer salts to keep up with speed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you'll probably lose that race. <laughs> oh, wow. Some actual bits coming in. Matiun, welcome back. Thank you very much for those bits, man. It's the new bit box. Oh. Uh, looks like Spore Crawler is going to be an okay deny. Oracle's actually wasting a lot of energy on it. He's going to cancel this up again. Bacon Hero wants to fire the missiles. Tries to snipe the boss, but get wrecked by that stream delay, son. Uh, looks like Fly's actually going to let one of the Spore Crawlers complete. I kind of like that move, to be honest. It's a little bit of peace of mind, so you know the Oracle's not going to be so ridiculous. Plus, maybe detection if you need it. Uh, yeah, but, most people who are looking for probably Well, this could be a little bit different than last game. Not different in the effect that, you know, Neeb's still coming across the map with a very strong amount of adepts. But a little bit more focused on the third. He's got a mothership core at home. So there's not going to be any sort of easy counterattack damage. Yeah, Bly also uh, not having a bunch of lanes running across the map. And Neeb not having more Actually, than the single Oracle to help. I mean, he might even really commit to this. This, this may have got... Bly with his pants down in a bad way. Ling's really you know, just on the way. He doesn't have anything to really stop this. It did like it was kind of the same thing last time. Like they, these adepts ran back and forth, back and forth before the Lings and the Roaches actually appeared. That's uh, uh, doing the same thing. But he's being very careful about how he engages. I mean, that would have been so tempting to chase those drones. But with the shades limited to scouting and just not knowing what's in the natural with the Oracle going back home too. I guess he's a little worried that there'd be banelings or just a lot of Lings, so he shades back home. All right, so this doesn't get too out of hand, but what I'm really worried about is that production tab right now. Seven gateways on the way. Part of this is a wall, but a lot of that's going to be production. And that's where Neve mm. ended up falling a little bit short last game, which is kind of funny. Yeah, Neve, in fact, I guess maybe feeling a little bit salty to die to an all-in is kind of all ending himself a little bit. So no second robo, no gases at his third base. Uh, Bob making a forge, so I guess, I mean, there's always the potential this is doing just enough damage to half to micro, macro behind this, but just nothing but adepts and a war prism and a lot of shades. And Bly, um, he might be able to see this if he had more scouting, but he just really doesn't have a lot going on here. All the overlords die, the lings aren't going to get in here and see them out of gateways until it's too late. This is, uh, this, is this might just be brutal. War Prism, is that the War Prism going to the side? No, that's a Phoenix. Oh, it's in the middle of the map. There you this go. This is cool. I like the fact that I only did two bailings here and not four. Um, unfortunately, they're still going to get picked up by the Mother Four, but the idea is that if those got the hits, the Lynx could execute. However, none of that's going to matter if these bailings can't get decent shots. Unfortunately, with Revelation cast on most of this army, Neve knew exactly where to look. He knew if he needed to split, and he knows that this army is just not going to stand up to his adepts. There's too yeah. many of them. And Neve's splitting is usually pretty good. There's been one or two games where it's like what happened to the Terran in you, oh, but God. usually it's very good. I didn't even realize there's so many over here. I was just focused on so many over here. Uh, Bailey's got some okay connections, actually, and that minus 10 health might have been enough to make this less damaging than it should have been, but Neve still has a lot of adepts that need to be cleaned up. 20 plus still in play. Yeah. The supplies are pretty much down the tail here. Plus one isn't done, two little hooks isn't done, and the drone count and army count in the gutter supply. So this has worked. <laughs> Neve doesn't even have to wait for the plus one. Well, those bailings are some really sick last second hits, but yeah, the drone count's already in just an abysmal place. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's totally game over. I mean, that war prism hasn't even been dealt with. You know, if you kill the war prism, it's always that one chance. Gee. 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 All right, well, Neeb will tie up the series 1 1. And also, because bets started late in the series, if the mods are around or if anyone's listening, we can totally uh, start bets now and it'll be no problem. But we are going to go to a small commercial break while we get Game 3 set up. So thank you guys for watching. Stick around, and we'll see you soon.